Good morning, and thank you for attending Toronto Police Headquarters. I'm Katrina Aragante of Corporate Communications, and I'm here today to introduce Detective Constable Alexandra Marks of Sex Crimes Child Exploitation Section. She will be updating you on additional charges laid in a child exploitation investigation. Detective Constable. Good morning, everyone, and thank you all for coming today. I am Detective Constable Alexandra Marks of the Sex Crimes Unit, Toronto Police, Child Exploitation Section. I'm here to provide an update on our investigation of Terence Lee Noftal, 55 years of Toronto. On January 9, 2018, Toronto Police Service Child Exploitation Officers executed a search warrant in the area of Dufferin Street and Eglinton Avenue West. Terence Noftal was subsequently charged with eight offenses. Invitation to sexual touching, sexual interference, sexual assault, make sexually explicit material available to a child, luring a child under 18, attempt to make child pornography, make child pornography, and breach of a prohibition order in relation to a criminal code section 161 order. Terence Noftal was previously employed at the Toronto Western Hospital. In 2012, he met a woman at the hospital and then befriended her child. It is alleged that he showed the child pornography and sexually assaulted the child. It is also alleged that he had inappropriate communications with that child. After Terence Noftal's arrest for the above mentioned offenses, the investigation continued. Officers analyzed the devices seized during the execution of the search warrant and located child sexual abuse images. Toronto Police issued a press release on January 11, 2018. As a result, additional victims and witnesses contacted our office in relation to this investigation and more charges were laid against Mr. Noftal on February 8th and on March 5th of 2018. These are three counts of sexual interference, one count of accessing child pornography, three counts of sexual assault, and two counts of breach of a prohibition order in relation to a criminal code section 161 order. Throughout our investigation, it was determined that in recent years, Terence Noftal used social media to communicate with some of the young people involved. On Facebook, his account name is Terence Lee Noftal, and on Instagram, his username is T Noftal with a vanity name of Terence N. It is alleged that Terence Noftal met one of the victims at the Be Happy Family Campground in Innisfil, Ontario. It is believed that he regularly visited this campground starting in and around the year 2000. The offense dates for the charges laid against Mr. Noftal to date range from the year 2000 to the year 2017. We are concerned there may be more victims. We are asking anyone who may have information about this investigation to please contact us at 416-808-8500 or if you wish to remain anonymous through Crime Stoppers at 416 416- 222 tips. Thank you. Detective Constable Marks, how many new victims do you allege there are? I'm not going to give specifics about the victims that have come forward to date. But it's more than one? It is more than one. So did they all come forward to you after seeing the initial media coverage, or did you guys go to them after what you found on his hard drive or hard drives? They came uh, forward to us after our initial press release. Detective, how many, how many more do you think there could be? This obviously goes back almost eight I wish I could answer that for you. I don't know. I can't speculate at this time. Can you tell us about the campground? What type of activity you may have been engaging in there? What, what I know is that Mr. Noftal spent time at the campground uh, starting in about the year 2000 uh, with respect to his activities or dealings with the campground beyond that. I can't say. What was his, uh, in what capacity did he work at Toronto Western Hospital? You'd have to confirm that with the hospital itself. 
So can you just tell us why was he frequenting this Be Happy uh, campground? Was he actually a camper himself? And is it something he did yearly? Or can you just paint a picture of why he might have been there? And was it sort of like what happened, allegedly happened at the hospital where he was befriending families and then becoming friends with their children? Again, I can't talk about uh, his specific activities at the campground. Uh, I don't know that information. All I know is that he was known to frequent the campground starting around the year 2000. Until 2017? Uh, I don't know, have an end date for that. Detective, in his, in his role at the hospital, did he have frequent dealings with, with children and stuff at the hospital? I can't answer that. You'd have to confirm that with the hospital. Do you know where he was working pre like currently? Him, what, what sort of job he had? What sort of employment? Sorry, when he was arrested? Yeah, he, when was, he was arrested. Is he was an employee at Toronto Western oh, Hospital. Okay. What do you know about um, how he was communicating with some of the victims online? Uh, he was communicating with some of the young people involved in this investigation through social media, uh, via Facebook and Instagram. Uh, I can't comment on that right now, I'm sorry. And would, um, you guys aren't alleging that he was purporting to be somebody else. Like sometimes we hear from you guys they're pretending to be a 14-year-old girl or a 14-year-old boy, you know? Was he misrepresenting himself online at all? Or? No, I'm not alleging that at all. Uh, his usernames and Facebook profiles uh, seem to be a true representation of his person. Are these profile pictures, like you have the one on top that says Facebook, the one on the bottom that says Instagram? Yes. Okay. And they then are. is that his mugshot? Correct. Detective, so all the, the alleged victims here, are they, are they people that he would have already previously known, previously known before to, uh, contacting them on social media? Or is he these people he reached out to on social without knowing them at first? I'm not going to get into the specifics of that. It seems that this began with one alleged victim whom he met um, through the mother at the hospital. Uh, what was your reaction when you started getting these calls about this man who was at the time working at a hospital and now you're getting all these calls and you're getting all these more charges? So how do you describe this investigation? We are concerned about this investigation. I can't make any direct comments as to uh, the procedures of the hospital. You would have to contact them directly to get uh, information on their hiring practices and procedures. Uh, but. In general, I can tell you that, uh, yes, this investigation is concerning to all of us. So is it fair to say that of the alleged victims you guys had, some made contact with him through the hospital, or is it just the one through the hospital at this point? Uh, I can tell you that um, the initial victim that was connected to the hospital at this time is the only person that has any tie to the hospital whatsoever. And then how many is the campground? I'm not gonna say. But did he make, uh, were any of the victims people that he had just made contact with over social media? Or is the social media stuff, did it come from, you know, a, a personal meeting in the real world? None of the victims were sought out via social media. One more question, please. Detective, can you just talk about the, the family and then their reaction to all this? To, to just kind of, this is obviously very shocking and unnerving for anybody that's had to go through this. How do they deal with, with what's happened over the last few months? Uh, I'm not going to make a comment on the families. As you just indicated yourself, this is always shocking and surprising to anybody. Uh, but I'm not going to get into specifics of, of family members. Sorry, just one more. Can you just explain what the uh, Section 161 order is all about? Sure. Uh, a Section 161 order is a prohibition order that can be given by the courts when an offender is convicted of a sexual offense in respect to a person who's under the age of 16. Uh, sorry, I'm just going to explain oh, further. No, that's okay. Um, a 161 order can include a number of conditions that limit the offender's contact with children, and it can be issued for any duration, including up to a period of for life. So what was his? Ten years. Ten years, and can you say how long into that, how far into that order he was? Uh, I can say that the 161 order was um, part of a 2009 conviction. Sexual interference. And if this was the first time 16, you said, do you know how old that, that I'm not going to get into specifics of that offense. So in 2009, he was convicted of sexual interference. As a result, he was ordered, he's prohibited. Do you know the extent of that order of what kind of contact he was, was or wasn't allowed to have, have with children? I'm not going to state the specific conditions from the order. Thank you. We're talking about a historical, it appears like an historical sexual assault um, case here. 
Uh, how far back do you think this, this could go? This man is 55 years old and you're talking about going back now almost 20 years. Who do you want to hear from? And many of these alleged victims may be afraid to come forward if they haven't to this point. What, what do you say to those people who may be watching who think, you know what, I've kept this in the past and I, I don't think I want to come forward because I'm afraid. And no one will believe me, perhaps. Yeah, well, a any little bit of information can be helpful to an investigation, uh, whether or not you think that piece of information may be helpful. So anyone that has any information is strongly encouraged to contact us. Uh, we will uh, patiently listen to, to any bits of information that people might have. D does an Thank alleged you. victim have to testify if they come forward? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not going to comment on that. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes today's conference. Thank you for attending.